If you've heard of MITRE ATT&CK but you're not sure how to practically use it, this video is for you. So what I want to show is some of the practical use cases around the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Frameworks tend to have this high arching theoretical knowledge about them and how to apply them. But the reason I like MITRE ATT&CK so much is it's extremely practical. Specifically, you can use it to help figure out and map your detection capabilities, your prevention capabilities. You can use it for threat intelligence, things like threat modeling, as well as for adversary simulation. So I'm gonna talk through these briefly and kind of get you going on how to practically use them. Let's start with the detection. There's a project called MITRE DETECT. It's not a officially from MITRE, but what it does is it allows you to open this editor. And in the editor, you can actually start to map out your data sources. So for example, if I click new file here, add data source, I could say something like, I have Windows operating system events. Well, Windows event logs. I could say when I registered it, today is 1121. Notice that the date goes backwards, that's fine. And as long as I check these boxes, then all of a sudden what it'll do is it'll add it to this list and later I'll be able to output a MITRE navigator file. I'll show that here in just a second. I can also say where I get this from. This is just for your nice reminder. And there's a qualitative data source review. I'm not going to cover that for this video, but that's just your way of measuring how well you think you're handling that data source. And I can go through here and add multiple of them. Like let's say for some reason you're trying to figure out whether Sysmon is a good event, uh, a good data source. Well, if I type Sysmon, notice it doesn't do anything. Because Sysmon itself is not exactly the data source. Sysmon is process use on network, process monitoring, process command line, registry, and there's a whole bunch of things in here. So what you would do is you go to Microsoft Sysmon and you would start to figure out what are all the different things it records. Now, similarly, if you're trying to compare Sysmon versus things like EDR, you would do the same thing because you'll notice there's some discrepancies. There are some things Sysmon might do that your EDR does not. So which one is the data source? And it might be a mix, but how do you justify that? Well, so at the end of the day, what you do through MITRE DETECT is you add things in here. I'll do process creation here or process command line monitoring. Check some boxes, you add it, you save it to YAML, and then down in the documentation, you can figure out how to convert it, that YAML file, into a navigator JSON file. It's just a simple command line, you run it, and it outputs. I've already done this for you, so I'm gonna show you what this would look like. This is MITRE ATT&CK's navigator tool. This is specifically version three of Enterprise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to open a outputted file from detect. I've got one from Windows logs, just kind of standard Windows logs. This would be my coverage. See a lot of white. <laughs> but okay, that's Windows operating system logs. This looks bad, but realistically, there's a lot of things you need the standard Windows OS logs for things like log on monitoring. So don't be dismayed. And again, it's just one data source. So let's then open and compare this against Windows with Sysmon real quick. So I've got Windows Sysmon. Now, that's quite a bit more filled in. In fact, some areas have a lot of coverage because, well, Sysmon is basically, well, awesome. <laughs> so, so, okay, but what if, what if you're trying to validate to your employer, you know, should we deploy Sysmon, should we not? Well, this, this is that communication. This isn't just you saying your opinion. This is really easy to show like upper management and be like, okay, here's Windows operating system logs we're doing today. Here's Windows Sysmon. Well, okay, but uh, well, okay, let's look at it a little, little bit differently. In here, what I'm gonna do, and actually before I do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in one of these, right click anywhere and do select annotated. That's gonna select all the ones with color and I'm gonna give them a score of one just so they have some value. So everything that's got some type of purple color now has a value of one. 
If you want that box to go away, just click on it again. I'm going to do the same thing here. Select annotated, and I'm going to set the scoring to 1. Now, watch what happens because I have this. I can now go to create layer from layers, notice the letters, and I could say something like, well, C and not B. Highlight all the areas that it's in Sysmon, but it's not in Windows OS. That's the coverage you're going to get, and you can validate this. Discovery, there's a whole bunch of them in here. Versus Windows, there's a bunch missing. So I can go through here, and I can graphically show, okay, if we deploy Sysmon, we'll have this additional coverage. Well, we have uh, application whitelisting, or we have endpoint detects response. That's fine. Go back to detect, start mapping out the data sources you have, and include things like Sysmon and do it layer by layer comparison. So this would be, as an example, Sysmon versus Windows OS. Now, new problem. There's other things we can do with MITRE because there's a lot of projects out in the community to give us rule sets and detection capabilities with Zeek or Sim logics or all this different stuff. You know, my favorite one is Sigma Generic Signatures. I'll just show you this from Google. Go in it. This is a project that helps me write rules in a generic language, a Sigma format, convert it, and then it works with things like Elastic, Splunk, Logarithm, QRadar, PowerShell, Grep. It's pretty cool. And it comes with hundreds of rules. And if I go into these rules, such as Windows, built-in, I'll just click on one of these. Notice they have MITRE ATT&CK tagging. On top of that, this project comes with the ability, I'll just find it, it's Sigma 2 ATT&CK. You run it against your rules folder and it outputs a map. Now, I've got one pre-generated here. This is of one of the, the environments that I maintain for one of my clients. And I'm going to open an existing layer. This is a Sigma rule heat map. Now notice, this is just the Sigma rules. This is no additional rules. This is just what came with the Sigma project. That's some pretty good coverage. Yay, we're doing fairly well. Well, again, there's a little bit of a problem that I think we sometimes struggle with. Having detection rule sets is not having a detection capability. For example, well, let's go back to the layer approach. My output, I've already saved the score of one, so that's good. But if I do something like show me where I have Sigma rules, but I don't have visibility in Windows, Sys Windows with Sysmon. Oh, well, those rules, well, Sysmon, I don't have exploit public facing applications, but I have some rules with Sigma. These rules will never fire because I have no data sources for them to even map to. That's a problem. That's a very common problem. I see a lot of organizations like, yay, we're doing good. We have all these different rules. And it's like, you have alert rules, but you don't even have the data source for them to even fire against. <laughs> so, okay, we got to fix that. Okay. So this would be something like alerts with no data sources. All right. Well, and I can map it a different way. I could do something like, Show me where I have the data sources, but I don't have any rules. That's another common problem. Oh, ouch, 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 ouch. Okay, data, but no alert, alert rules. Okay, now stop and think of how quickly I could go through that, assuming I went through detect or I had something like my alert rules mapped to Navigator. Projects like Sigma can help with that. Then all of a sudden, when I go to management, and, or the rest of the team, the SOC, whoever you are, this is my communication strategy. This is an impartial representation. It's, hey, we're clearly missing these things. These are known attack techniques. Please keep in mind the goal is not to have 100% coverage. It's just to cover areas that you think you're most prone to. All right, that brings me up to a different set. There's a couple things we didn't talk about. We still haven't talked about prevention. We haven't talked about doing things like threat intelligence or modeling. We haven't talked about doing red team, purple team, anything like that. So first off, let me knock off the, the prevention. I can manually go through here. I'm showing you little snippets of techniques here. 
I could go through here and say, well, from a prevention standpoint, we have maybe authentication systems like uh, privilege access management or web application firewalls or anything that will stop brute forcing. So you could manually go in here and be like, well, I'm going to go ahead and color that and say, I think we've got a pretty good job of covering brute forcing. And what you would do is go through, you could actually use the detect editor, which is supposed to be for detection, but I could just treat it as these are the things we have prevention capabilities with, convert that, and now you'd have the same thing from prevention. I see a lot of uh, clients do this more manually. Takes a bit of a time. I would almost start with the detect, but then I can come back in here and be like, okay, our EDR covers scheduled job. We've tested it and it, it does okay, but we at least have some coverage. And you'd have to come up with some type of color scheme. Don't forget if you're doing layer by layer comparisons, select annotated and at least give them a score. If you want to get more in detail, you, you might want to say, well, brute force has a higher score. Let me change that to three because we have three different prevention tools or something. So prevention is kind of, it just kind of continues what we're doing with the detect. Let me show this from a different aspect from threat modeling though. So let's say you work for healthcare. How do I focus my detection and prevention capabilities on attacks against healthcare? Well, did you realize that there's a lot of known documentation from MITRE ATT&CK that's part of its reason for existence against some of this? So if I go into MITRE ATT&CK, and let's say I search for healthcare, this, this search usually takes a little bit, but I can start to see all the different groups that are attacking healthcare and what techniques they're using against them. I'm not going to go through this all the way because I just want to teach you how to do this yourself because short, sweet video highly effective hopefully hopefully <laughs> so okay i see apt 41 let's start there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a layer specifically for apt 41. i usually would do this on a slightly different window and then export the results i'll show you what i mean here but apt 41 i'm going to hit this multi-select i'm going to find apt 41. there it is select right click select annotated Oh, I just accidentally unselected them. So this selects them. I usually give it a color. The color doesn't matter. I just want to be able to visually see what I'm hitting. And then I'm going to give them a score value of 1. Okay, so APT 41. I'm now going to add another layer. And I'm going to add Deep Panda, and then I'll do Fin 4, and I'm going to stop. But you would want to go through all of these. So Deep Panda, and then Fin 4. So create new layer. Deep Panda add find it in here deep panda select i'm going to set a color just again that's for mine give it a score of one and then i said fin four there is a maximum number number of layers i can go which is why sometimes i'll do this exercise in a different window but we'll be okay fin four select we'll color code it and give it a score. Now what I can do is I can create a layer from other layers, but this time I'm going to do G plus H plus I. So I can do a math expression here. And when I create this, notice it's color coded. I don't like the default color code, so let me change this. So usually what I'll do is the first one might be yellow. Then I do orange. And then I do red. And I do a scale of 1 to 3. So here, and again, you would want to do all the different groups you could find from this. I stopped. But just to see what we've got here, for healthcare specifically, use of valid accounts, use of Windows WMI is more prevalent than other areas. So this is kind of a quick threat until threat modeling exercise. So now I can say for healthcare as an industry, this is what is known common attacks. So where should I focus my time and effort and energy? Right here, right here. So this basically becomes my industry threat model. Again, you would wanna build this all the way out using all of them. 
And then now, notice I can't add any more layers. I'll just delete these because I don't need them anymore. You can export this, by the way, when you're done. So one of these buttons in here will let, actually let you download. It's right here. So I can download, save it, re-import it later so I can modify it or update it. What I can do here now is say, okay, all right, show me where I have attacks, G, that are common to my industry, but I don't have data source visibility against it. And hopefully this is empty. Oh, well, industry threat model, boom, Sysmon. Ooh, okay, so these are areas I might want to focus on if I was in healthcare because currently I have no data sources for these. Now, this is threats, no data, and I'll do one more here. I'm gonna do G, but not D. So do I have alert rules, but I don't have uh, common attacks, but I don't have any alert rules against it. Okay, well, this would be threat, no alert. And I might do one that is threat model, but I have no data source and I have no alerts. I have, ooh, double, double problems. But now this lets me figure out from these gaps where I should potentially focus my detection capabilities and my prevention capabilities. Quick, easy, done. All right, well, okay, so we've got detection, prevention, we've got a little bit of threat intelligence, at least threat modeling. What about the whole purple team, the adversary simulation? Now, I'm not gonna demo this one because I like to keep these short videos so that you're not just overwhelmed, but MITRE is also really good at that. These are tools like Caldera. This is from MITRE, it's their own project. It'll basically run attacks and see if you caught it. And I really like Red Canaries, Atomic Red. Again, same concept. It's to run attacks to see if you caught it or prevented it. It's basically testing, not only do you think you have the visibility, not only do you think you have the alert rules, did it work? And if you're doing this from something, say, like a SIM or a NSM, NDR, then all of a sudden you could run some of these attacks and you have daily detection auditing or daily prevention auditing so you can prove that your tools are actually working. So, MITRE ATT&CK, is it actually practical? Is it actually useful? Yes. Short video, we've covered detection, prevention, a little bit of threat modeling, threat intelligence, as well as just a highlights on some of the adversary simulation. If you've enjoyed this video, I do have a challenge for you. This, this is actually, for me, January 1, 2021. It's a brand new year. We've got a challenge for you. This year, anytime you watch one of these videos, I would really like to see you pay it forward. What does that mean, pay it forward? Well, that means I'd either like for you to come up with a blog, a video, and share it with the community, if you can. I don't care how what you think, you know something. You know something I don't know, and I'd love to learn from you. Or if you don't have time, because spending time with your family, your friends, that is really important, then at least do something like follow me, share, retweet, do something to get information out to others. As one person helps another, we all get better. So my challenge for you this year is to continue pushing forward this education. Either mine, someone else's, your own, I don't care, pay it forward.